Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Welcome once again, my viewer, in this beginning of the week, working days. Thank you so much for being with us in our previous editions of the Daily Fountain. And I strongly believe that God has been blessing you through this wonderful platform and meeting. At this moment, we are going to pray. Today is Monday, August 17th, 2020. We are going to look at the topic called to genuine repentance. Called to genuine repentance. Our text will be Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. Before we commence, please bow down your heads and let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your grace and the privilege to see this working day. Thank you, Father, because of your grace upon our lives. Thank you, Father, because there is no other name above your name. Thank you, Father, because of your word, by which you are going to bless us today. Let there be direction, let there be illumination, let there be understanding, let there be inspiration through your world. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for you are about to encourage us today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Zechariah chapter 1, 1 to 6. If you are there, I read. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah. Son of Edo, the prophet, saying, The Lord has been very angry with your fathers. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, said the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets preached, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn now from your evil ways and your evil deeds, but not hear nor heed me, said the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets they live forever. Yet surely my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your fathers? So they returned and said, Just as Lord of hosts, I mean to let us go, according to our ways and according to our deeds, so he has dealt with us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time of introduction, first of all, my view, I would like you to know that God never does anything without a warning. Before God would do anything, He first of all warn a person. He never does anything at all without a warning. That is exactly what we have observed from the place we have just read in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. The gains of genuine repentance cannot be overemphasized. There are a lot of gains for genuine repentance. The reason why God is calling on lives, God is calling on families, God is calling on our nations, especially this nation, our country. God is calling on us to come back to Him. You know He's a merciful God. At the same time, He never rejoices in the death of a sinner. He wants a sinner to come back to Him. So He's calling us today on a positive repentance, on a genuine repentance. God can use every means, God can use every circumstance to bring us back to him. He can use pain, he can use disease, he can use disaster, he can use calamity, he can use even delay to bring a person back to him. He's a loving God, you know. That's exactly what we have seen today from the place where we read. Zachariah was a priest, Zachariah was also a prophet of the Lord. He called the people of Israel back to God because he never intended that she repeat the mistake their forefathers made. Now they are back from captivity. And God is warning them through this man called Zechariah, through this prophet called Zechariah, please don't do what your forefathers did. Don't go that way. Because it calls that if you go the way they went, definitely what happened to them will happen to you. But at first, I would like you to note, first of all, my viewer, this morning, I want to first of all tell you that disobedience to God is a pathway to captivity. Once one disobeys God, it's inevitable. Calamity is inevitable. That's the reason why everyone is running skelter helter today. Because of disobedience to the word of God. We have chased God away from different institutions. We don't need God anymore. We don't need Him in our systems. Every system is now collapsing. 
It seems the whole world is going into captivity. And God is watching you and I. God is watching us. Disobedience is a pathway to a captivity. Again, I would like you to note that lifestyle of sin is an insanity. Lifestyle of sin is an insanity. God never punishes a righteous person. Never. But lifestyle of sin is an insanity. I would like you again to know that wickedness pays wrongly. You know, when people are wallowing in wickedness, they are just enjoying themselves. They call it fun. They call it different names. But I must tell you, my viewer, wickedness pays wrongly. It pays wrongly. That's the reason why the people of Israel went into captivity not once, not twice. They went into captivity. But God is still a merciful God. Just brought them back again. But to warn them that wickedness pays wrongly. Again, when you return to God, definitely God returns back to you. Draw closer to God and God will draw closer to you. He's monitoring every second, every minute, every hour. God is monitoring every activity that's going on here on earth. When you draw closer to him, he comes closer to you. Again, I must tell you that iniquity is a block of destiny. When someone is living in sin, when someone is living in iniquity, it blocks destiny. It blocks life. Whatever that person is doing will not work again. And finally, I must tell you, God is a restorer. God is a restorer. He will never allow his people to go into captivity forever. He has a thought for us, and the thought is that of good and not of an evil, but to give unto us an expected end. A call to genuine repentance. My viewer, have you have have life to Jesus Christ. If you have not been saved, you are not saved at all. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? This is the end of the age. Any moment from now, this age will end. And I must tell you, when any age is about to close, there are lampants of iniquity and wickedness. This is an age that must usher in the coming of our Lord. God is calling the whole world to come back to him. You know, when we are migrating to the year 2020, people were making a lot of proclamation, a year of divine expansion, a year of divine dominion, a year of um, prosperity. All these things are good. Nobody knew that something that is called coronavirus coming. And God decided to give us another opportunity. I call it another opportunity. COVID-19 is an opportunity coming, calling us unto repentance. Are you not seeing how people are dying? The rich, the poor, the literate and the illiterate. The tall and the short ones. Hey, people are dying. And there was a time I told people, if you see someone that is burying you now, blessed are you. For time is coming when no one will see who will bury him. That is the prophetic. So God is calling us for repentance. It's just a warning. Whatever you are seeing today is just a rehearsal. My viewer is just a rehearsal. Greater things are coming. I am not a prophet of doom, but God never does anything without a warning. I remember the case of Noah, the preacher of righteousness. For 120 years he was preaching. People were laughing at him. People were cajoling him. People were making mockery of what he was doing. He was witnessing. He was also walking. He was also warning generation of what's about to come. At the end of the day, there was a cry of the dooms. And today, God is giving us another opportunity for repentance. It calls to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. What are the pathways for this genuine repentance? There must be first ten first. First ten first. The prayer of a sinner is not breakthrough. The prayer of a sinner is not open door. The prayer of every sinner should be, O oh Lord, have mercy upon me. That is the first prayer of a sinner. And that is what Zechariah is trying to tell the people of Israel. Don't go that old way. Your people disobeyed God. They moved into idolatry. And God punished them. And God sent them into exile and captivity. But out of his mercy, out of his goodness, they are now back again into their land. Please don't go that same way. The same message is what God is passing to us today. We must do first thing first. We should learn the lesson of the past. Do the first thing first. When you forget the lesson, please, please, you are going to make the same mistake. 
are going to make the same mistake. First thing first, God is calling our lives. God is calling our families and nations, especially in this time of the pandemic. History will now tell us that history repeats itself. What we are passing through now, people pass through the same thing. In 1918, when there was a pandemic, the Spanish flu, the same thing we are expressing today was expressed those days. And we, were, we had a history that almost 50 million people died globally. And, you know, one thing about this life is that when after all these storms are over, people will go back to their normal ways. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand this. Everybody is now crying. Disease everywhere. There is no food in the land. Hunger is everywhere. People are now lamenting and crying and crying. But let me tell you, when things are now normalized, we go back our old ways. So we go back again into immorality. So we go back into the case of divorce. So we go back into the case of stealing and cheating and killing and kidnapping and violence. Exactly because times have normalized. But for now, you know, many people are now claiming to be children of God. They are claiming to be born again now because I've seen hardship. Some are going to church because of this necessity or because of the problems now in the land. But when everything now have normalized again, we go back to our vomit. It should not be so, my viewer. It should not be so. So first thing first, let us learn the, first, the lesson. That should be the first thing. Again, the pathways for genuine repentance, let us heed the warnings of God. Hearing the warning of God. Persistently, God is warning us. God is warning us. He has used different challenges and circumstances. When we hear the warning of God, there will be total transformation. It's for your good and for my good. God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows is what he is going to reap. And let me tell, tell you this, my viewer. There's no need dodging him because by and by we are going to see him at the end of the day. We are going to meet him face to face. By that time we are going to render our accounts for us still worship here on earth. Let us hear the warnings of God. He's warning us. Look at the way everything is collapsing. Go to the school institutions. Go to the school systems. Go to the offices, go to the marketplaces, go to government offices and see what is happening there. No one listens to the voice of God anymore. Even the church, being the hope of the common masses, are disappointing God. And God is calling us today for us to hear his warning. Less what happened before we repeat again. I remember I told you before, another many other things are coming on the way. God is telling us to tighten up, tighten up, tighten up and be strong and be focused on him. Finally, another pathway for this genuine repentance is to turn, turn from evil ways. Turn from evil ways. It's a standard for godly blessings and visitation. Repentance and turning from our evil ways. It's not just by claiming it and confessing it. I'm a child of God. Many a times we put our stickers on our cars. I'm a child of God. I'm born to I set and get out of my life. It's not just like that. God wants us to practicalize it. That wherever you find yourself, people will know it. In the area of your accounting in the office, people will know it. In the area of your management, people will know it. It's not by falsifying issues. You must be very, very okay. People will see this. After all, look at the case of Daniel. His record was stressed. In his marriage, at home, in his office, there was no fault, there was no error, except in his own religion. What a wonderful testimony. And let me tell you this, if you must turn from your old ways, please make restitution where necessary. If you have done evil, make restitution where necessary. And God will definitely see you through. Let me now read from the Daily Fountain, a very wonderful manual. Zechariah the prophet called from the tribe of Levi. And this qualified him for two offices, both a priest and a prophet. He had a mandate of reminding the Jews who returned from Israel and Babylon what happened to their forefathers, which led to the captivity and the destruction of the temple. He also told them the plan of God for the remnants, those who had returned from Jerusalem with him and his companion. Prophet Zechariah in our text called, encourages the Israelites to return to the Lord their God. The word return here means genuine repentance, to forsake their evil ways and practices and not to walk on the path their forefathers walked which led into Babylonian captivity. God promises that if we repent and forsake our evil ways and practices, He just and righteous to forgive and to cleanse us from our sins. Like the Israelites also need to repent of all your wicked ways. 
in order to enjoy your fellowship with God. You cannot express the benefits of becoming God's child and the joy of working with Him without confessing and repenting of your sin genuinely. Sin always calls people off from God's glory and robs them of their blessings, thereby making them miserable. God is calling you to turn and to submit to Him completely in order to enjoy freshness from His presence. At this moment, we're going to have a prayer. Word of prayer. Can you say after me, dear Father, forgive me for my shortcomings and cleanse me by the blood in jesus name amen at this moment now my viewer i have to ask you please continue to stick yourself uh, to god go closer to him worship in truth and the spirit is worthy to be glorified he is worthy to be honored i only thank god for your life today this wonderful <coughs> ministration of the daily fountain please always follow us it is a very wonderful uh, channel for you to be uh, elevated in the spirit. Uh, thanking God for your life every day when you study our daily manual, the daily fountain of the Church of Nigerian Anglican Communion. It's a working week. I wish you well. Whatever good you have hands to do, we surely prosper. May God see you through. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the field. You are lifted up. When men are saying there is a casting down, you say there is a lifting up. At this moment, I have to say, may God continue to be with you. Please, repent genuinely. At the end of the day, things will work all right with you. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.